There are two important maintenance tasks associated with the Ply 130 separator, one being blade replacement and the other measuring and adjusting clearance between the blade and the two traction rollers. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to remove a blade, how to install a new blade, and how to adjust the top and bottom traction rollers. So first we'll remove the blade by loosening the hex, the five millimeter hex bolts. So we'll remove the blade and then we'll insert the calibration jig. When inserting the calibration jig, we've got to do a couple of things. We're going to take the adjustment handle and we're going to set it to four and a half. We're going to make sure the adjustment guide here is set to 120 millimeters and then we're going to um, insert the calibration jig. The purpose of the calibration jig is so that the cutting edge of the blade comes up against the face of this jig, which will automatically square it into the machine. So with the toggle switch set to the forward position, we're going to push against the back of the jig with a piece of wood while at the same time pressing the actuation pedal. Now before you put the blade in, you'll want to make sure that your toggle switch is in the off position and that you're unplugged from your power source. Looking at my new blade, I've taken the blade nuts from the old blade and put them in position. Notice the bevels are facing toward the cutting edge of the blade. And with that said, now I can insert it into the machine. What I'm doing is I'm going to be pushing gently the blade up against the calibration jig until it's squared in place. Once it's squared in place, I can go ahead and take my hex bolts and screw them in. Now that you've tightened up your hex bolts, we can remove the calibration jig. And to do so, we'll plug back in our power source and then we'll go ahead and toggle our switch to the reverse position until the calibration jig comes out. Now that we know that the blade is correctly positioned between the top and the bottom roller, we'll also want to make sure that the spacing between the blade and the top and bottom roller is correct. In order to do so, we will check the spacing with these two shims. The white opaque looking shim is representative of the go gauge. The black shim is representative of the no go gauge. So to determine positioning is correct, we'll want to make sure that this opaque white shim goes between the top roller and the top surface of the blade, as well as the bottom roller and the bottom surface of the blade. As you can see, it freely goes between the blade and the roller. Now, the black shim represents the no-go gauge. This should not go between the blade and either of the rollers. As you can see though, it freely goes between the blade and the top roller as well as the bottom roller and the blade. So our next step would be to adjust the rollers closer to the blade itself. All right, now that we know that we need to make an adjustment to the traction rollers, uh, there is a couple of things that we need to do first. Uh, number one, we'll have to remove this uh, lock nut, the adjustment handle cover plate, as well as the motor. So we'll start by removing this thumb nut. And then we'll need a five millimeter hex wrench to remove this hex screw. Now I can remove the cover plate. Then I'll move over to remove the motor. Just a little tip, if you take a look right here, 
you can see the keyway. What I want is that keyway to be at the top so when I remove the motor, um, the key itself won't fall on the floor. So in order to do that, I'll just toggle it in reverse until that's up at the top. There's a six millimeter hex bolt that needs to come off here. It's the only thing really holding the molder to the machine. And then there's also a spacer that you'll want to hold on to right here. And then the motor should just slide off. You can rest it right on the table carefully, and then we can proceed with making the adjustments. So we know that we need to bring the traction roller down closer to the blade itself. So in order to do so, we're going to start with the top traction roller. This is the shaft for the top traction roller. It is on an eccentric, so if I turn the shaft one way or the other, it's going to either raise that traction roller up or lower it. In order to lower it closer to the blade, we're actually going to slightly turn this shaft clockwise. So in order to do so, I'm going to start by removing this fixation screw. It's um, a four millimeter. Now I'm going to make my adjustment to the eccentric. So in order to do so, I'm going to go um, clockwise, clockwise with the eccentric shaft here. So in order to do so, I literally have to loosen this top bolt. What I'm going to do is go down about a quarter of a turn. And whatever I adjust on the top, I'm going to do the exact same on the bottom. So now I'm going to go up a quarter of a turn and tighten it. So what I've done essentially is I have turned this shaft a little bit clockwise. So now what I'll need to do is put my fixation screw back in, tighten it up, and then go through the shim process. So in order to do that, I want to make sure that my handle here is set to zero. And then I'll proceed by using my go-no-go -go shims. I'm going to first start out with my white shim, make sure that it goes through, and it does. I'll take my black shim, and what I want it not to do is go through, and it doesn't. So my adjustment was successful. All right, we've adjusted the top um, traction roller, and now we're going to go to the bottom. Um, as you recall, we've got too big of a gap between the traction roller and the blade. So what we want to do is bring that traction roller up closer to the blade. So as you can see, this is a pretty tight space. So what I need to do is make some room so I can get this hex wrench in. So I'm going to loosen this nut again. And now you can see I can adjust this to get my wrench in. So what I want to do here is I want to loosen the bottom. And again, I'm going to do just a quarter of a turn to start. So I'll make my adjustment here, quarter of a turn. And then I'll tighten the top a quarter of a turn. And what I've essentially done is I've turned this shaft counterclockwise to bring it up. So I'll put this back to the zero position. And tighten it up. And I'll go through, the, through that same process of checking between the bottom roller and the blade with my shims. Once again, I'll start with my white opaque shim, see if I have clearance, which I do. And then I'll put in my black shim, and I can't get it through. So I know that my adjustment, once again, was successful, and now we have completed the actual setup process for this machine. Now we're going to put the ply 130 back together. So in order to do so, we'll remove the thumb nut, put the cover plate back on, place the thumb nut, and then put the motor back in place. Just to note, 
make sure your grommet is actually in this bracket. It's important that that's in there. And then as you can see, we left the keyway up so we can slide your motor right back in place. I'm using my right arm to support the motor while I slide it closer to the machine. Not to forget our spacer that goes in place. And then we can slide our six millimeter bolt through the hole and into the machine. When tightening the motor up, you notice that it moves up and down. I'm just gonna simply tighten it until I can't wiggle it up and down anymore. Once I'm at that point, it's all where it's supposed to be. Now that your Ply 130 is in proper adjustment, you'll want to conduct a test separation. 